Hello, my name is Carrie Brown and I'm with the Central Mississippi Regional Library System. Today, I'm going to be reading to you chapters one and two of A to Z Mysteries, The Zombie Zone, written by Ron Roy, illustrated by John Stephen Gurney, published by Random House, New York. Chapter one, Ruth Rose's grandmother set her paint box on the sidewalk in front of their hotel. They were in New Orleans, Louisiana. Ruth Rose's Graham was visiting the city to take a painting course, and she had invited Dink, Josh, and Ruth Rose to join her. What are you going to paint today? Ruth Rose asked her grandmother. Ruth Rose liked to dress in one color, and today's color was robin's egg blue. Everything matched perfectly, down to her blue socks and sneakers. I don't know yet, her grandmother said. Our art teacher will tell us. I'd love to paint one of these charming old buildings with the balconies and creeping ivy. Thanks again for bringing us, Dink said. His real name was Donald David Duncan, but ever since he was little, his nickname had been Dink. And thanks for hiring Jack to show us the bayous, Josh added. You're very welcome, Ruth Rose's grandmother said. Where is he taking you today? We're going on a hike, Josh said. We're visiting a community in the woods, Ruth Rose said. He said the people there live in huts with no electricity. That sounds fascinating, Ruth Rose's grandmother said. Oh, here's Jack's van. Have fun, and I'll see you for lunch. The kids watched Ruth Rose's grandmother stride away with her paint box under one arm. A van pulled up to the curb. It was painted all over with trees and vines and flowers. On one side was an alligator with the words gator guides spilling out of its mouth. A tall man in boots, shorts, and a t-shirt hopped out. He had light hair and a deep tan. Hey, kids, ready for a nice hike, he said. Hi, Jack, the kids said. Josh and Ruth Rose piled into the back of the van as Jack climbed into the driver's seat. Dink sat in the front passenger seat. Buckle up, Jack said. While the kids fastened their seat belts, Jack handed Dink a can of bug spray. There will be a lot of flying critters where we're going, he said. The kids sprayed their arms and legs while Jack guided the van through the busy city. Dink saw a lot of people jogging, walking dogs, or eating breakfast at little sidewalk tables. One woman strolled along with a parrot on her shoulder. We'll be hiking through a beautiful forest today, Jack told the kids as he drove, and we'll meet those people I told you about. Why don't they live in the city like everyone else? Ruth Rose asked. Not everyone likes city life, Jack explained. The folks you'll meet today would rather live the old-fashioned way. They grow most of their own food and hunt or fish for the rest. But don't they miss TVs and computers? Josh asked. Jack laughed. The kids go to school in town, so they probably know about that stuff, he said. But without electricity, how do they cook? Dink asked. On open fires, Jack said. Most of them have simple stoves made from clay and rocks. Dink pictured his parents cooking all their meals outside. He smiled. The road became narrower until the van was bumping along over gravel. Tall trees lined the road. Grayish-green Spanish moss dripped from the branches. Through the open windows, Dink could hear birds and smell sweet dampness. Jack's cell phone started ringing. He pulled the van to the side of the road and stopped to chat for a minute. That was my wife, he told the kids after he hung up. We're expecting our first baby any day now. Cool, Josh said as Jack continued driving. Will you take him on hikes? The baby could just as easily be a girl, you know, Josh, Ruth Rose said. Either way, he or she will definitely be a hiker, Jack said, grinning. Soon Jack parked the van in a small clearing off the road. Behind them was the sunny gravel road. In front was a dark wall of trees, moss, and thick shrubbery. The kids and Jack climbed out of the van. The air felt muggy and tiny bugs flew around their faces. Jack slung his pack over one shoulder. Then he pointed to a brass plaque. The words Old Forest Trail had been stamped into the metal. Here's where the trail starts, he said. Watch the ground for tree roots. Are there any snakes around here? Josh asked, stepping quickly to stay right behind Jack. Probably, Jack said, but we won't see them. As soon as they feel our footsteps, they'll take off. They walked single file. Jack was first, with Josh on his heels. Ruth Rose followed Josh, with Dink in the rear. The trail was narrow, and it curved around trees. Moss hung in their faces, and roots tried to trip them. 
The buzz of insects was everywhere. Dink's skin felt sweaty. He noticed a few narrower trails leading off to the right and left. He was peering down one of these when suddenly he tripped, landing on his hands and knees. You all right? Jack said when he turned around. When Dink looked up, he saw a small sign nailed to a tree trunk. Someone had painted three words in red. Danger! Zombie Zone! Chapter 2 They stared at the sign. Some of the paint had dripped down, giving the words a creepy look. Dink felt the hair on his arms stand up. Zombie Zone? Josh said, almost in a whisper. What does that mean? Beats me, Jack said. I've never seen this sign before, and I bring hikers out here a lot. Jack moved closer to the sign. This nail looks new, he said. See, it hasn't had a chance to rust yet. It looks like they use blood, Dink said. Jack touched a letter. No, it's just red paint. But who put the sign here? asked Ruth Rose. Jack shrugged. It could be a joke, just something to scare the tourists who hike here, he said. I've heard rumors that strange things have been happening around the cemetery near the village. Josh gulped. What kind of strange things? he asked. Well, some people swear they saw a zombie, he said. Zombies are part of the voodoo religion. I don't know anyone who practices voodoo, but some people still believe in it. Let's keep walking. As the kids followed Jack, Dink thought about what he had told them about zombies. He felt goosebumps crawl up and down his arms. They hiked in silence for another few minutes. The dim trail widened into a sunny clearing. About 20 huts formed a half circle around the edges. Each hut had a porch, a garden, and a fire pit or homemade stove. The hut walls were made of logs, branches, and mud. The roofs had been built with sheets of tin, branches, and broad leaves. In the center of the clearing sat a larger building. It was at least four times as big as the others. Dink peeked inside the open door and saw a lot of seats. He figured it was some kind of meeting place for the villagers. Huh, that's strange, Jack said. No one's here. Dink looked around, seeing no one in the gardens or on the porches. The only sounds were the insects and birds in the trees behind the huts. Maybe the zombies stole everyone, Josh whispered. He poked Dink in the back. Don't get creepy, Ruth Rose said. Dink tapped Jack on the arm. There's someone, he said, pointing. A tall woman had stepped out of one of the huts and stood on the porch. Her gray hair fell almost to her waist. She wore a long dress that looked homemade. Her feet were bare. Hello, Myrna, Jack called. I'd like you to meet Dink, Josh, and Ruth Rose. They're here on vacation. Where is everyone? The woman named Myrna nodded at the kids. She pointed toward a small trail to the left of her hut. They're all in there looking at the graves, she said. Jack looked where she pointed. In the cemetery? Why? Jack asked. Myrna shook her head. You go see, she said. Very bad voodoo. Then she turned and walked back into her hut. What's going on? Dink asked. I don't know, but let's go find out, Jack said. Jack led the kids past Myrna's garden. They left the sunlit clearing and entered the woods on the shady path. A few minutes later, they came to a small cemetery. It was enclosed by an old iron fence. Moss from a tree branch covered part of the fence. Inside the cemetery, about 30 people were clustered in a bunch. Some of the people were shouting. A few were crying. What are they doing? Ruth Rose asked. I'll find out, Jack said. He walked over to the group with the kids following. Jack knelt on a pile of red dirt next to an old man. In front of them both were two deep holes in the ground. Two graves have been robbed this week, the old man said to Jack. My wife and I are afraid. She wants to leave here now. She says we can't stay near zombies. Thank you. Be sure to tune in next week for chapters 3, 4, and 5. Goodbye.